welcome back. I'm Sage and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Mid-Market Pulse show. ASX reclaimed 7,100 points for the first time since the pandemic began. A near map up 14%. The benchmark index ASX 200 breaches the 7,100 level on Wednesday. Its highest level since the COVID-19 pandemic led sell-off triggered in February and March last year. ASX 200 is up 45.80 points or 0 0.65% to trade at 7,113 by this afternoon as traders remain buoyed by the Reserve Bank of Australia's decision to continue ultra-accommodative policy stance in its latest policy announcements. Six of 11 sectors are trading in green, while healthcare is the best performing sector. Other sectors that lead on the ASX include energy, financials, materials and consumer staples, while information technology, utilities, telecommunication services, consumer discretionary AREIT are among the top losers. Earlier today, the ASX 200 opened marginally lower after the US stocks closed, mixed overnight. The market, however, rebounded strongly on the back of gains in heavyweight miners and banks, which remained in the upbeat mood after the RBA policy announcement. In line with market expectations, the Australian Central Bank has maintained status quo in current policy settings, including the targets of 10 basis points for the cash rate and the yield on the three-year Australian government bond. The central bank has also decided to continue the current parameters of the term funding facility and the government bond purchase program. The bank's central scenario for the GDP growth has been revised up further with growth of 4.75 per cent expected over 2021 and 3.5 per cent over 2022. Now let's have a glance on the top gainers and losers of the day. Australian aerial imagery technology and location data company Nearmap Limited is the top gainer on the ASX rising over 14% to $2.35 Australian after it raises the financial year 2021 annual contract value or ACV guidance on the back of strong first half of financial year 21 performance. Janice Henderson Group PLC, Worley Limited, QBE Insurance Group Limited and Nine Entertainment Co Holdings Limited are among the other top performing stocks on the ASX. Some of the worst performing shares are Silver Lake Resources Limited, Appen Limited, Net Wealth Group Limited, Polynovo Limited and Remelius Resources Limited. Moving forward, let's look at the shares in the news. Australia and New Zealand Banking Group Limited announced that its cash profit from continuing operations more than doubled to 2.99 billion Australian dollars in the half year ended 31st March 2021, compared with 1.41 billion Australian dollars a year ago. Fire Finch Limited shares are trading higher by over 2% at 0.39 Australian dollars after the company unveiled new plans for the Morilla gold mine in Mali. The new plan foresees an annual average production rate of 160,000 ounces of gold to 2030. IQ GPS Group shares were trading in the green at 86 since Australian after the company announced that it has signed an extension to a significant agreement with a Fortune 100 US electric utility to help assess and design its power distribution infrastructure. Antiotech Limited has announced to raise up to four million Australian dollars through share purchase plan or SPP by issuing fully paid ordinary shares to its eligible shareholders. Eligible shareholders can apply for up to 30,000 Australian dollars worth of shares at an issue price of 26 cents per share as the company aims to raise up to 4 million Australian dollars in totality through the SPP. Nick, Cully, Nick Scully Limited has released a trading update and profit guidance report as per which the total written sales orders for the group grew by 52% in the first half of financial year 2021. EBI TDA for the year ending 30th June 21 is expected to be around 120 million Australian dollars, while net profit after tax is likely to be in the range of 78 to 80 million Australian dollars, a rise of 85% to 90% on the previous financial year. Healy has said its non-COVID revenue has grown during the second half of financial year 21 and the company's pathology coronavirus testing reached 3 million total COVID tests during the March quarter. 
Pangana Capital Group has awarded the management of two global equity strategies to Axiom investors. And Medibank Private Limited upgraded its growth outlook, saying it was hoping to achieve total policyholder growth of 3.5 to 4 per cent for financial year 2021 as against earlier growth forecast in excess of 3 per cent. Incitec Pivot subsidiary Incitec Fertilisers has signed a 20-year offtake agreement with Perdeman Chemicals and Fertilisers, PTYLTD, and Plenty Group's warehouse funding facility for renewable energy and personal lending purposes has been increased to 200 million Australian dollars, up from 100 million Australian dollars. Amcor has upgraded its earnings growth forecast for financial year 2021. The company's GAAP net income for the quarter rose 58 per cent to 684 million US dollars. Looking forward to the global market updates. The overseas Asia-Pacific markets were trading mostly higher within trade as three major markets, China, Japan and Hong Kong, remained closed on account of respective national holidays. The Dow Jones New Zealand and Taiwan TSEC or TSEC 50 index are trading higher. Next is the commodity market update. The crude oil prices surged after more US states eased COVID pandemic related restrictions and the European Union sought to focus on tourism. Brent crude futures settled $1.32 US up at $68.88. US a barrel, while WTI crude futures rose $1.20 US up to close at $65 US 69 a barrel. Oil stocks such as Woodside Petroleum Limited, Oil Search Limited and Santos Limited traded higher as much as 1.3%. Gold was down by 1% after the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said interest rates may need to rise. The U.S. gold futures last traded at $1,776 U.S. an ounce, falling 0.9 per cent. Australian gold miners might take a hit due to falling gold prices. Shares of Newcrest Mining Limited were down by 1 per cent, while Northern Star Resources was down 2.8 per cent. And meanwhile, the Australian dollar was trading higher by 0.09% to 0.772. The US dollar index rose 0.337%. The Australian dollar is a commodities currency. Thanks for joining us. That's all for now. Stay tuned with Calkine TV. Hope you're staying dry on this fairly wet day in Sydney. And we'll be back with more market live updates for the economy and diverse sectors and themes. This is Sage signing off.